All right, guys, welcome back. So we're here on another segment of the Initial Architecture Engineering uh, Teach to Fish for Firepower. And this section is going to be concerning some minor deployment options. Now we've already talked about kind of feature selection, code selection, the physical chassis, throughput, all of that. Now we're down to kind of the last major hurdle of how do you want to implement these firewalls? So you have a few options. We'll go ahead and get started here. <coughs> so we're gonna talk about three different options you have that are major decision points at this point, and that's whether you wanna use multi-instance, high availability, or clustering. All right, so the first one is multi-instance, and this has to do with uh, kind of economizing on your hardware. Now there's some truth to you can buy a bigger box and have it do multiple things, you save a little money, and that is absolutely true with this. One of the cool things about multi-instance is that it allows you to do that, to carve up those resources, uh, and share the resources to do multiple things while affording you the protection of isolating those resources. So you think about the old ASAs you could run in multi-context and that allowed you to run three, four, five, ten firewalls on one chassis, which was great. The only problem was that if one of them went haywire, you could take down the entire chassis, all other nine firewalls. So Firepower has kind of moved to this full virtualization layer with FXOS where all those discrete resources are separated and that's good for you. Number one, it allows you to carve up that box in multiple firewalls here within one chassis. Now pay attention, it's only 4K and 9Ks. Um, but you get the protection of the resources being fully segmented and virtualized so that if this firewall goes haywire, FTD1 here, it will not take down or impact FTD2 or 3. Now they can still share physical interfaces um, but in terms of impacting the other boxes on a CPU, RAM, and disk space, you're good. So why is that good? It allows you to economize, right? If you are going to buy four, five, or six uh, Firepower 2100s, well, you could just buy one 9000 with the higher end modules and save some money while still performing that segmentation or virtualization. It also kind of allows you to kind of implement a managed service provider or multi-tenant situation where you're an organization responsible for putting the physical uh, box out there uh, and some, and you want to carve it up for multiple customers. And this way you can have a fully separate firewall for each customer while still having just one instance or one physical chassis out there. So that's multi-instance and, and why it's good. It helps you economize. The next thing is you're really worried about redundancy in some cases, especially if you're on those core side firewalls providing access for services to your customers. So what is high availability? It's when you can take two physical boxes and have them running, and if one fails, the other one takes over. So that's good in that you get redundancy. But the one drawback is you're paying for a box to sit there and do nothing the whole time until it's needed, which, yeah, and, you know, in the, in the vein of cost effectiveness is not that great. So it's good, you get redundancy, failover in the event of a device failure, but your resources are sitting there idle. So it's good, you get redundancy, it's bad, you're wasting resources. Clustering is the last option, and this is where you can kind of get the benefits of both worlds. <coughs> Clustering allows you to take a fire power, regardless whether it's a virtual uh, instance or a physical chassis, and group a bunch of them together to act as one single firewall. And this is essentially an active-active model. And so you have like two 9300s with a bunch of SMs, and you can have it set up as a full six firewalls acting as one single firewall. And it does this through span ether channel and a few other things. We don't need to get into details here, but I will go into it later on the O&M side. But uh, it allows you to have this dynamic failover where you have five, six, seven firewalls. It also allows you to scale out later. So when you're looking at possible growth and you're not sure right now, um, you can install three firewalls now and oh, you're getting an 80% utilization throw on a fourth firewall. It does not interrupt the flow of traffic. It is a seamless expansion of your firewall. Uh, and you can see that's kind of represented by the orange here. All of these physical blue devices are acting as one virtual firewall. Uh, so it allows you to seamlessly scale out while providing redundancy. Now, one of the minor drawbacks is when you do this, uh, if the data sheet is you know, let's just make it easy, 10 gigs per box, 30 gigs total, if you put three of them together, you actually get about 80% of that performance. So instead of 30 gigs, you'd be pumping roughly, what, like 24 gigs is 80% of that. And that is because 
that part of the making this work and the full redundancy and seamless expansion is they have to leverage some of that bandwidth back and forth between each other to reroute asymmetric flows through the box that's responsible for that connection and stuff like that. Now there is also one other drawback. Some features may or may not be supported here. And that's because the way the technology is built and the way it funnels this traffic back and forth, like uh, load balancing remote access VPNs is not ex uh, available in the clustering. There's a few other features that aren't available either. And so if you're really interested in figuring that out, I would recommend you open up your browser and you Google firepower clustering. And if you type limitations, it'll come up. But the idea is you get this document that's tailored towards the 4100 and 9300, just like I had noted in the slides. Uh, but down here, you will also see that there are limitations, requirements, and prerequisites uh, of things that do and don't work. And this is a really good document that goes over almost everything you could possibly want to know when you're building a cluster. Now, I do have a video that actually goes into building a 4100 cluster, every single aspect of getting this up and running. So that is in my general library available to you guys if you ever want to stand up a cluster. And personally, I highly recommend a cluster as a solution in your networks. Um, it is a little complicated to get started, uh, but once it's up and running, it's super simple to maintain and expand later on. Uh, so again, that video is in the general library that I have available on YouTube. This is part of the Teach to Fish Firepower series. So. That's it for the deployment options, and that's because all the other options we've discussed or will discuss later, this is kind of one of those oddball situations where we had three big ticket items that we need to cover, but they didn't really fit in any of the other segments. All right, guys, have a good one. I'll see you later.